I'm pleased to present to you about inclusive community science partnerships from the perspective of Thriving Earth Exchange. As Daniel mentioned, I am Natasha Utagama, a senior specialist with the program, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to describe to you about how communities and earth and space scientists are making inclusive SciComm actionable and impactful. If you're into social media, feel free to tweet at Thriving Earth. And the slide here shows excitement of our community leaders and scientists interacting at our annual fall meeting at, at American Geophysical Union's fall meeting. So what is the Thriving Earth Exchange? The Thriving Earth Exchange is a program powered by the American Geophysical Union, or AGU. AGU is a professional society of earth and space scientists who specialize in everything from the core of the earth to the surface of the sun and everything in between. AG has approximately 60,000 earth and space scientists, uh, of which 40% of those are international in about 135 different countries, with over 200,000 scientists who have either presented at our conferences or published in our journals. So AG's mission is to promote the discovery in earth and space science for the benefit of humanity. For the nearly 100 years of our existence, our scientists have focused on research and publication around that mission, making us really good at that. But Thriving Earth Exchange aims to make AG's membership better at the latter half of that mission by leveraging our earth and space scientists to work towards benefiting humanity. So what Thriving Earth Exchange encourages and enables are communities and scientists working together using earth and space science to advance local priorities in climate change, natural hazards, and natural resources. This slide shows a portion of our All Projects page on thrivingearthexchange.org. And basically what communities and scientists working together, it's really advancing that diversity, equity, and inclusion that we're all here to learn more about. So the title of this presentation is Inclusive Community Science Partnerships. But what is community science? We hear a lot about citizen science. We hear a lot about other types of community engagement. But what community science is in the parlance of Thriving Earth Exchange is the process by which scientists and communities do science together to advance one or more community priorities, not needs. Doing science includes defining questions, designing protocols, collecting and analyzing data, using scientific knowledge in decision making and planning, and communities can be communities of geography, interest, or practice. So it expands the number of ways to be excellent at science, welcomes people from diverse, different backgrounds who have skills and experience that might not have been considered part of excellence in the past. This slide here shows um, scientists and community leaders interacting at our annual project launch workshop at AG's fall meeting that attracts over 26,000 scientists every year. Um, during a four and a half hour workshop that Thriving Earth Exchange puts on to bring together diverse groups to develop project descriptions in real time. I can tell you more about that later. So community science basically welcomes and values new skills and perspectives and people. So community science involves communities at every step of the process. Um, that means from framing those questions to developing methods to collecting and analyzing data to drawing those conclusions, applying those results to local impact, and sharing results that have global reach. This slide shows a circular diagram with each of these key steps in community science. So equity, yet another reason that we're here. Community science collaborates with communities who have been historically under underserved by science and contributes to the capacity to use science. It's pretty self-explanatory Equity means doing science that benefits all communities, implies that those communities have a voice in setting scientific priorities. In the peer review system, diversity and equity reinforce each other positively. More people from a community increases the opportunity to include community priorities in setting a research agenda. So this slide showcases one of our projects in, the, in Louisville, Kentucky with the Robertown Emergency Action Group an emergency, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, an environmental justice group that, rallies, that is rallying against industrial air pollution affecting the residents of Rubbertown in West Louisville, mainly African American and disproportionately affected by the industries that are loca located adjacent to the uh, community. 
And then finally, inclusion. Community science engages with other ways of knowing and expands the practice of science. And this is a very challenging part of equity, diversity, and inclusion because it means letting go of those assumptions that science is the smartest or even the only smart method in the room and being open to expanding the practice of science to include new ways of doing things. The dangers are resistance and conservatism on the one hand that end up sending messages that your ways aren't welcome in science, learn our ways. On the other extreme, we have appropriation, grabbing ideas and methods and rolling them into science while burying their source. So we have to be really careful in navigating between these two. This slide here shows uh, the Pamir Mountains of Afghanistan and Tajikistan. And it's another thriving earth exchange project that um, was working with 17 different Pamiri villages in Afghanistan and Tajikistan um, to, to uh, try to reuse some of the calendars of the human body that had traditionally guided their agro-pastoral practice. So with the last 100 years, there were a lot of social upheavals in Afghanistan and Tajikistan, as we know, and they were un unable to use those traditional um, calendars of the human body. So when they tried to reuse them, they realized that climate change had kind of messed with how those calendars of the human body had been done. And th they realized that um, there was, there was um, so, so basically what our project was able to do was to help to recalibrate it. And in a new iteration of that project, the, the communities have been able to harvest peaches and mulberries, and it has also resulted in having a climate science position in the Afghan government. So Thriving Earth Exchange does community science through four main steps, which is scoping out a project, beginning with those community priorities, matching them with a vetted volunteer, um, solving that project, usually a six to 18 month project that uses pro bono volunteers from our network, and then sharing um, these projects in a way that is replicable Replica, replicable and open source for other communities to be able to re use and uh, demonstrate accordingly. The way that we're able to get to communities is through a number of partners. Um, a lot of our partners um, work with us through, through several stages. They reach out to communities, they support projects, they share results. Um, in the same ways that our scientists are sometimes on the cutting edge of thinking about connecting with community, our community partners are also thinking about how they might incorporate science into their process. So this slide shows us the numerous partners we currently work with and the three ways connecting, supporting, and sharing that we have with them. So a few examples. Um, this slide shows a photo of scientists interacting with community leaders and consultants in Berlin, Maryland. In 2016, Thriving Earth worked with the town of Berlin on a project to convert land originally used as a poultry plant to a recreational area. The town had hired consultants to determine remediation needs. However, it needed a microbiological assessment of the ponds at the site in order to ascertain that a projected recreation area could indeed be used for the public. Um, sorry. So that impact was that the town was able to provide justifications to not spend the recommended seven to eight million dollars needed or recommended by the consultants to remediate the ponds. In Boston, Massachusetts, just up the street here, um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission of Boston wanted to build upon existing analyses of the region's food system and climate vulnerabilities to identify flood risk exposure to food distribution centers serving much of New England and the greater Boston communities of Chelsea and Everett. At that time, the metro area was undergoing a comprehensive flood vulnerability assessment of its food distribution systems north of Boston. Most of the metro region's food supply passed through the two major food distribution centers in these towns. The output of this project was a presentation by the community leader to, and scientists at AGU's fall meeting describing the extent of the coastal flooding and the need for regional protection and restoration needs after 2100. So the impact of this project was strengthening food distribution centers that serve over 12 million New Englanders. And then in another example of one of our international projects, um, this slide shows a community leader in Montego Bay, Jamaica, speaking with a pig farmer about using organic fertilizers and the, and the uses of that fertilizer. Um, at Caribshare Biogas, a small nonprofit based in Montego Bay, Jamaica, determined that area hotels and farmers 
could coordinate to ensure that the former could sustainably use its waste and, latter, and the latter could use an organic fertilizer made from animal and food waste to grow more sustainable local crops. CaribShare has turned organic waste from hotels and small pig farms into biogas and fertilizer for sale to help address the island's energy access and rural poverty challenges. The project is nearing completion, but thus far, um, with the help of their thriving earth scientists, they've been able to develop and certify the organic fertilizer. Um, they've started promotion of the product to area farms, and they plan to conduct field demonstrations uh, so that officials and farmers have the ability to get feedback and answer questions. So this is strengthening the livelihoods of over 50 farmers in the area. So what are the benefits of community science? We see many. Um, some of those are, are listed up here, and I'm, since I'm running short of time, I'll just only highlight a few. But by starting with community priorities, it helps to inspire innovative research that wouldn't occur if the scientists didn't understand community context. It helps communities that wouldn't otherwise have access to science. In other words, environmental justice communities or communities of color, an opportunity to work with the latest researchers and their science, thereby strengthening community buy-in to science, scientists and their outputs. And then, um, it simil it, similarly, you know, science learning is advanced for both. Scientists learn how to better do their science in ways that benefit communities, and likewise, communities learn more about science that can advance their priorities. So currently we have over 85 projects. Most of, most of those are in the United States and gradually we're getting more interest and uptake to do of community science internationally. This slide shows a map of our projects um, in the US and internationally, as well as a team photo of community leaders and scientists who attended the 2017 project launch workshop in, uh, at AG's fall meeting in New Orleans, Louisiana. I know I'm making a lot of plugs for the fall meeting. So talk to me about that afterwards. <laughs> and then finally, um, to sum up, in the words of um, our director, Dr. Raj Pandya, if you want to learn how to do community partnership, show up, shut up, and eat up. Um, I'm so grateful to Inclusive SciComm, Sunshine, and her team, and my fellow panelists for this opportunity to share with you. Um, please do stay in touch through um, www.thrivingearthexchange.org or at Thriving Earth, and feel free to drop me an email at nudu-gama at agu.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>